Out about it, Israel. There is nothing we can do without the substance of living Torah. We know that your sure said that the Dabarim, the words of excellence, that I speak unto you, they are Ruach. It is the power of the visitation of Yah. No, Yah is just not a spirit. He is Ruach. He is everything that life consists of. And he profoundly uttered that these words that I speak, they are Ruach. And they are high. They are the substance of the living being. And without the knowledge of Yoshua HaMashiach, there is no power to life at all. You are simply subsisting. You have no life, period. You can pontificate and pretend in your religiousity and your sacrilege manner. It doesn't mean a damn thing to you, period. I shall, my friend. After what your son did to me yesterday, I have to come on. He has me hurting now, but that's all right. We greet you all that have joined us via the live broadcast, whether it's the live audio stream or the visual. We greet you all on this precious Shabbat, the Shabbaton. The your grants on to be at a house elected whereby he has sealed his name in the midst of that house and that elect. He make himself known by his visitation because two or three of us come to gather in his name. And because of that, he is also in the midst. He's in the inward parts of not only the congregation, but in the bosom the shot the breast of man that he may perform as the authoritarian as the authority of your sure being his head and he blesses Yisraya with precious Ishaw that they submit unto the beauty of Yah's great wonders that he has taken something like a piece of clay man Refine him unto the excellence of his power. That's why this world is pursuing anything that has the similitude of, of a man. And to make them faggots and homosexual beasts. I don't repent of my expressions. All right. And so you find men today, they do not exude the strength, the character of what a man is. And that's the truth. They are the Naha. They are simple little boys. That even a play toy doesn't satisfy them. What a nation has in the midst men, the Geba, men of strength, men of Torah wisdom, men of great knowledge understanding of the Torah, you have a nation whereby a mishra, a government, 
Emishra is a government. Not only does it produce a political power, but it produces a wealth and a social endeavor that a nation is joined together as Ikhad, as one. We call this most damnable process here democracy. It is demonology. It is out of the gates of hell. Because it teach your children to offend you. It teach your boys how to be effeminate little faggots. I don't repent of it. It takes away the beauty of a woman today that hell she has. No beauty at all. No tifra. None. You don't believe me? Ask Hollywood. Are not all these scarlets in hollow tree? And can't find one with a husband that there's some form of faithfulness. I don't give a damn if you reject what I say. And this is what is shaping and forming the minds of your children and your mind as well. But it's one thing about the power of Mishra. It produces a social system that even the gear, the stranger that is not birth under the seal of the commonwealth of Yisrael, that even that they are blessed, they have the berechaya, the blessings of riches. That there is great shalom, they're happy. There is a beautiful ecstasy about their living, the community life. You don't find that in this damnable twisted nation. It is wicked. It is trying to corrupt your children, you parents. Don't allow them to do that. These beasts out of hell kissing on television. Women that have gone away from the natural use of their body. Even the damn beasts of the field don't do that. And the young girls are so for popsicle and a lollipop. In every kind of damn whoredom there is. That's why we need the Mishra, the government of Yah. And out of the midst of the chaotic Hoshech, darkness. Whereby the mind cannot even grasp. The simplicity and the beauty uh, of the Torah of Yah. We see this power of great magnitude uh, rising out of the laba, the bosom, the inward parts of a man with one purpose. And that is to oppose everything that is legitimate. Uh, and everything that has been birthed in the bosom of Yah before there was, uh, he birthed man. You don't understand that before there was he had that in his bosom and he took some of the simplest forms of the earth dust and he made man and he created him uh, in the power of his image of his similitude his strength he is not some faggot looking weak creature that's why the Torah tells us Yah uses the word show Show yourself or ish, ish, show yourself as a man. And that doesn't mean you have the similitude. It means that you have the masculinity and the strength. You have the koach, the power of Yah. That's what that implies, Yisrael. And so what has the world done with the very similitude of a man? It had made it effeminate. They have these little effeminate Johnny Depp and all. They're afraid to grow one hair on their face. It is the truth. And the feminine soft. I don't give a damn if you don't appreciate what I say. I will not curtail nothing for no one. We're living in a polluted society that despises Yah. We're surrounded by every kind of dark thing there is. Our minds do not gravitate to what is truth. We're not disciplined by what truth is. We are people that's full of jocularity, funniness, and silliness, and laughter, and damn stupidity. And we literally think we're going uh, into the kingdom. I don't give a damn what the whore has taught you. This thing you call the church. I will utter unto you truth today. And you buy it. You buy this truth. It doesn't take silver or gold to buy this. 
you can't buy this with silver gold has no relevance in this truth i want to establish a little format as to understand this tremendous rising of a kingdom that shall rise up with great magnitude against Yah. We see the birth of that in this nation. This is a nation of gods. Every kind of damn god you want to name, this nation has one. Has a god for the faggots? Has one for the bull daggers? Has one for the races? Has one for the supremacists? It has a god. And by the image of this most damnable corrupt mind, they have created this little vile, effeminate thing uh, that hangs in their houses of harlotry. Uh, this faggot image they call Jesus Christo. He's a damn faggot. He's out of a mind that is so corrupt. He was created out of a mind that was corrupt. To sow every kind of uh, dissension, uh, every kind of division, uh, segregation, separatism. Uh, Yisrael, the house is equal. Uh, your is one. And out of the most damnable corrupt mind of darkness, uh, it is presented unto us today this vile uh, image, uh, what we call Jesus. He's a white God, if I may use that expression. I don't give a damn if you get offended. You get offended, then there is something in you that must be rooted out. He's the image of the white God. Well, you're making it a race thing. You are a damn liar. From the concept, he was made a race thing. There is only one race that Yah has created, and he made man. And out of man, we see the excellence of his power. I don't retract that. I don't take it back, and I will not speak in a way that is appeasing to any flesh at all. You that listen to me, you know me, all right? Hallelujah. And so out of all of this Hoshech, out of darkness that is so pronounced, they deny Yeshua. Look at this day that Yah has set apart. He has Hadosh. That we may gather and share how to worship, to dance, to sing. You don't even need no preaching if the heart is right. And yet this is the world, this nation is full of every kind of God worship today. The football, the basketball, their sporting activity, the hollow tree of their house. We think we're going into the kingdom that is a life from hell. It is one thing you must realize. You're going to die. I don't care if you're 19 or 18. 20 or 55. 85, 105. You're going the way of the grave. Well, my intellectual proudness and my expertise in my Harvard degree tells me that we have evolved through evolution through some kind of an amoeba form that created this monkey-like thing. What a damn stupidity. And these are the intellects of the world. And these are the scholars that demand attention when they speak. Damn them all were brought forth by the power of his school, his voice. His voice is his substance. Damn their corrupt science. Damn their wicked science. It's not worth a damn. Because if it was, then we would have a system in this nation that would not be so suppressive and oppressive and so wicked. Whereby the school teachers are raping your sons and your daughters. It is the truth. You don't have to buy it. Whereby your neighbors are pedophiles or raping your babies. Whereby what they call gay, I call them gay lal. They're dumb. Kiss like a husband and wife and we laugh at it. <laughs> and we don't damn that. 
and exposing our baby's mind to such vile of filth. And when a young woman is the age of 18, she has no sensitivity to life. She's been abused. She's done every kind of uh, vile, conscious activity that one could even think of. And so no one gives a damn about her. And so you have these little effeminate boys like to congregate with boys. And show their proudness and say that they are strong. And they're not strong. I was thinking this morning, I'm going to preach. I said, yeah, you know, when it comes to physical labor, I was just pondering. I say, I'll work as hard as 98% of this nation. I would allow them to outwork me in the physical application of labor, work. You understand? And if that is my pedigree as far as my passion in that arena, that a man has to labor quite tenaciously to override me in this that I'm about to speak unto Yisrael. I want to establish a principle today on Mishra. It's important to understand that. Whose kingdom are we of at this moment? That's why we must be in the body of Yoshua Hamashiach. We must have the the mind, the analytical processing of Torah as a living substance that emanates from the bosom of his people. We must have that Yisrael. Because if we don't have that, we don't have a damn thing. We have nothing. And so there shall arise a government. It shall be social. We see that with every government. They're all the same. Whether it's communists, whether it's totalitarianism, whether it's democracy, they oppress, they rob the poor and pretend that there's pillage for the poor. It's not a damn thing. When less than 1% of this nation owns less than 1% of the wealth, you know that something is wrong. When 50% of this nation owns less than 1% of the total wealth, somewhere the government is wrong. And I don't give a damn who it is. Whether it was the bush that came before the rock, or the Romney rum wine that shall come after it makes no difference. Or the Kennedy, the Eisenhowers. It doesn't make a damn of a difference. It is predicated upon a mind and a mentality uh, that is against the art. It begins in your school system uh, to raise your children uh, to abandon any pure principles of Almighty Yahweh. At least when I was in school, we were seeing the old song, Kumbaheya, 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 Kumbaheya. We were seeing that. Now they esteem every kind of vile practice there is. A government that shall arise, the government of Yah, is one that is social. It is a political process based out of the Torah. And the Torah is the wisdom of the one that created all things. He took the law that is unexplainable and he said from the dust of the earth I shall make man. And out of man he opened a door unto his bosom and he gave him a help me to a woman. She came forth out of the rib of man. She is represented as the door unto man's bosom. And so what the world does now, it, it defeminizes the woman. I'm a man like you, sit down, Jezebel. You see that grotesque, ignorant thing that called in last night? She will defend that dog in Texas. And this stupid woman didn't even know what truth. 
was. I'm not afraid to die. The government. I want you to read quickly here from, listen to it, from the book of Shirach. He utters a profound statement. Shirach 10 and 4, he says that the Mishra, the government, the power and the dominion to rule in the conscience of man, he says the government and the power of the earth is in the hands of Almighty Yahweh. Is that sound wisdom? I wanted to read that because there is something I want to point out in the process. And if you don't understand that, you will become very fragile. You will, you will fade away in the midst uh, of, of the torrid storm that is arising on the horizon. Uh, and that it has overtaken the nations uh, and the people of the land. We must understand that the heart of the king is in the hand of Yah. Just like Yah turns the Yam, the river, so he turns the heart of the king. There is nothing Mr. Barack Hussein Obama can do but what the creator commands. And no other man is going to alter that. I don't care this Mitch Romney, Hillary Clinton. He is the man for the moment to keep the course of darkness and death. This is the man that says it's all right. He commends two men, call themselves marrying, or two women then. You vote for a damn beast like that? Damn, Obama. Oh, I know someone will hear that and say he threatened Mr. Obama. Mr. CIA, if you come here, come with your work clothes on because I have been pondering what I must accomplish next week. I got plowing, I got planting, I got cutting with my chainsaw, I got to load wood and unload it. Come and help me work and then we'll talk about the threat, all right? How about that? The government, there is only one government. The government of the Choak or the power in the earth, land, the earth, in the spirit where we live, it is in the hand. It is in the yards. It is in the strength, the hands of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah? And over it, over the government, Yahweh will raise up. And set the right hand of man for the time. For he has set the right man in every capacity in his place. That's why it's excellent for Yisrael to have those that are shoftim judges. That pronounces the shafats. Those actions that are administered out of the Torah. They judge all matters out of that. I don't care how small the matter is. You judge it according to the mind of Yah. So Yah is over the governments of the world. He is over the communist black country like Red China. He is over the pseudo Fisher type government that we call Russia. He is over this demonically controlled entity out of the gates of hell call America he is over that government we know that the very seed of Hoshultan was embedded in the mind of this nation because those that came before they came to steal they came to rob and they did do some killing and that's the truth no I don't give a damn whether you love me I don't have many that love me anyway so I, I don't look like I'm broken down and fragile do I I think I'm quite healthy We ran full court basketball yesterday, and that little skitter, he was moving fast. I came down with a nice crossover and hit a pile of sand, and there I tumbled like not a big oak tree. As Zachin Yaramayan, the fellow of a pine tree, I could do nothing but fall. You understand? I enjoyed that. We're going to do that at least once or twice a week, he and I. I really enjoyed that. 
back to the business here. So the government is at the head of y'all, regardless to what constitution is of the government. There's only one true constitution of government that brings about the shalom, the riches, the political structure, that everyone is fairly treated, Yisra'ah. Everyone. There is no minimum wage. There is a righteous wage. There's a righteous wage, Yisra'ah. You don't hold back by deceit with fraudulent practices as this country. The labor of those that reap your fields. The Torah is adamantly against that. But you give them a righteous wage that is just. I have a righteous heart. When you're dealing with men that are full of demonic power and women, they don't give a damn about you. And that's a fact. Come out of her, Yisrael. Come out of this polluted, bloody whore that her nidar, the stain of her administration, her uncleanliness is all over you. Wash yourself in the dam of Yeshua, Hamashiach. For the government is under the hands of Yah. It is all in the hands of Almighty Yah. And so what Yah does, He raises up those uh, of great multitude of power for one purpose. Can I identify the purpose why he raises up a man like Mr. Barack Hussein Obama? He raises up a Bush dynasty or a Clinton royalty or he raised up the superficial Reagan that he mesmerized the people as he did in Hollywood, uh, Hollywood uh, that he deceived him, them through the manip manipulation of their simplicity and stupidity. They can't tell you a damn thing that Raven, Reagan did, nor can they tell you a damn thing that Obama. I can tell you one thing. He identified that it's all right for faggots to marry. And what a damn wickedness. What a beastly little coward of an individual. Well, you shouldn't talk about people like that. When these beasts try to impose that on my children, you are a damn fool. When they tell me it's all right for women to be Less than a beast? Hell, we have cows, we have goats, we have chickens, uh, we, have, uh, we, we, have, uh, we have sheep. I've never seen that. This is why God raises up a man. Turn quickly to Romeo, Romans chapter 9 verse 17. Romans chapter 9 verse 17. It says, for the chattuv or the scripture says... Uh, to Pharaoh, does the Torah say that? I will read where the Torah implies this. Out of the Torah, out of the old covenant, it says, for the Katul scripture says to Pharaoh, even for this same pleasure, this purpose have I raised you up. He raised up one of the most mighty dynasties of time. He has raised up America. He has raised up this illegitimate prostitute, uh, this whore. And the mothers of this land are selling their daughters to prostitution and every kind of damn whoram. Yeah. You find them little whores, that's all they are. Yeah. Have no dignity, no honor. You don't want no pride, Bath of Tizayon. Yeah. You want dignity that you preserve yourself uh, in the honor of the discipline of the Torah of God that even men will regard you. Uh, these damn little prostitutes today. Listen. It is a tragedy that's what is taking place. And the mothers are as lustful as the daughters. As the fathers are, so are you, my people. For this purpose. For this reason. For this hafiz. For this pleasure. Yas says to Pharaoh. I have raised all room. I've caused your name to fill the earth. I've caused your recognition to be beyond the boundaries of the scope of the mentality of man. I've raised you up that I may show my my power in you. Did this man or the mind or the leba of the government of this man, did it rise up against the children of Yisrael? Did this man says there is no one like me for her power? We will get to that. I know we don't study a damn thing. And especially you that think that you have a great knowledge. 
I will break it down, Yisraya, and I will not uh, do it expeditiously because above all things, I want you to have the wisdom of Yah. I want you to understand. Yah says, for this purpose, I raise you up that I may show my power in you. He has raised up this nation. He's going to show his power in this nation. She's able to burn your babies. She's able to shower down terrorism upon a nation like Iraq. She's ready to go into Syria. She's ready to bombard Iran. She went to a nation that had nothing but the oars and the riches of the land for the rich bastards on Wall Street and to shower down death and all kinds of diseases or the people to satisfy the damn craving of the lust for drug fiends in this damn America and the United Hell Kingdom of Britain and France and tell you it's right. We brought them liberty hell your people here have no liberty this make you hotter on your ears here please don't come here until you thoroughly listen to me you that are listening make sure you listen before you come you're welcome to come but you better make sure you listen I hear people say they listen to me but you don't listen to me when one is you they hear with the very slightest of nuances, none escape them. And they're here to obey what the messenger says. Hallelujah. He raised up a beast. He raised up this nation and the nations of the earth. He's going to show his power. And what the nations have done, it has done, they have turned the minds of your children and generations against the Most High. That's what it has done. It has created a government of self-preservation. I am someone. I am great. I am mighty. I am God. You are. And I have no compunction with that. You hear them in the whole houses of Christendom. We are gods. I won't argue with you. You're right on that. You are a God. I will identify all that. I said to little Abner yesterday, who do you want to be like LB or your father? He says, Daddy. Because I said to him, LB doesn't have what your daddy possess. He got something LB would never have. I don't take that back. Hallelujah. I've raised you up that I may show my power in you. Uh, and that my Hashem, my name, might be declared throughout all the earth. Uh, they're going to declare the name of Almighty Yahweh. From the ruins of this vile nation. They are preparing to fight a war. That is terrestrial. That is beyond the ability for man to understand. They're trying to raise up an army against Yahweh. That's all right. He got it all under control. He have raised it up. What does the word America mean? It means nothing. It has no meaning. Just like the word Great Britain, there is no, there is no origin in that, uh, in that definitive. Uh, what does the word Mexico mean? They have no meaning. There is one that has meaning. It is called Yisra'ya. That the power of Yah, it is Hamashiach, has prevailed. Yah said, I've raised up the bear. I've raised up this great dragon that is commanding your resources to sustain life that is beyond 1.5 billion and we will drive you into the abyss of darkness and drive the labor out of your damn wicked land because you have consumed too much you said i raise you up america you're gonna know that i raise you up for out of you there shall be a remnant that shall know my name and they shall call upon my name they shall identify my power and they shall know the power of my resolve that I put in them. He has raised up this cauldron of wickedness. He has raised up this oppressive system of America. He has put into place this most repugnant, vile system that we call democracy. Where is it? In the Tea Party? <laughs> In the Democratic, <laughs> as a Republican, 
Isn't that amazing? What does the word republic and what is the prefix and the suffix of the word? Where does it derive from? This is a stupid generation. It is so stupid, it's pathetic. User ain't not educated. I know the eyes are glad eyes ain't not educated. But I have knowledge. I have the power to discern. I have the da'ats. Can I proceed? Well, that's a statement that is written in the Brit Hadassah, the renewed covenant. Does it have any clarity in the, in the writings of the Novi, the prophets, in the Torah? We'll turn quickly to Shemoth. I want to establish this Mishra to show you what shall be and the government that we shall buy and sell and eat and have much. It says here in the book of Exodus chapter 9 verse 16. Exodus, Shemoth, Exodus 9, 16. Yah says that indeed, I like that. There is no speculation. Exodus chapter 9 verse 16. When it is indeed, there is no other alternative. When it is indeed, there is a set definitive. It cannot be defined any other way. Yah says for indeed. For indeed, for this cause, I have a man, I have raised you, I have appointed you. He has appointed this system. He has appointed you, Yisrael, for in you shall his name dwell. For indeed, uh, for this cause, have I omed, have I raised you up. Who is he talking to, Pharaoh? For what purpose? To show in you uh, my ko'ach, my power, my force. My superior ability against all of your great warriors and the battle written warriors you have. He said, I have raised you up. He said, and that my name, he said, my name may be, my name may be so, so far, so far. My name may be declared. My name may be reckoned. It is amazing that in this nation they know more about the Beatles than they know the name of Yah. This religious hollered spirit cannot tell you the derivative of the name Jesus or Lord God. They cannot tell you a damn thing. Because it doesn't take much to mythify this stupid generation. When I was a lad, they were selling things like pet rocks. And don't you know the fool that... Uh, that created that stupidity. People were literally buying rocks that we find them by the millions around here. They had pet rocks. They have this damn little Fushisis, Fushisis, Harley Cole, Bobby doll, and everybody buys one for their babies. That is the entrance of the demon power. The Sesame Street, those two men that play Ernie and Burke, whatever his name, they have lived together since they were 18 years old. They're both faggots. And you allow that spirit to enter into the bosom of your children, their mind. Oh, Ernie! And yet they don't even know the name of the Most High. Yah said, I've raised you up. I will get my koach. I will show my might, my strength in you. And my name may be so far, it may be reckoned with. We're going to have to reckon with that name. Yah says, my name is going to be numbered with the greatest of names. There's no name like my name. Yeah. He said, my name shall be reckoned. It shall be so far throughout some of the earth or all the Erech. He says the Erech. Erech. E-H-R-E-T. Erech. The entire sphere of the earth. Even the heavens know his name. Even the demon powers that fell know his name. They just did not realize the power of that name in that living clay body. Yorkshire Hamashiach, because if they had known, they would never impel him. And if you knew him, you would never impel him continuously like you do. We are a wicked generation. You ever look at yourself and say, I hate you? I do. My constant reverberation of prayers kill me yeah, when I say that. I know in the physical I need to be here for period. But I want him to destroy everything about me that rises up. I don't like me. Oh, I love me. I love my nefesh. I love the life, the ruach of Yah. Kill me, Yah. So that's my constant prayer. 
and not only that, raise up the Nomi. Hallelujah. May I proceed? Your sons have raised you up that uh, you going, my name shall be declared throughout all the earth. Uh, and this is what we have even under the conscious control of this nation. Uh, it is a mind that is being bred it, that has all abandonment of what is right. Well, I don't see what's wrong with that. It's wrong for you, but it's right for me. So it's right for one to say, all right, boy, the clip is on you. Boom, 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 boom. It's right to that one. And the one that abused your little baby and take advantage, it's right in their eyes. There's a way that is right unto man. But the end thereof is death. All the ways of a man, they're right in his own eyes. So when they rape your babies, it's all right. Mr. Sun Dusty taking your babies uh, and poor children uh, and think that he is showing them a time uh, to, to, to maturate them uh, and he's raping your damn sons and your daughters. Uh, and Mr. Paterno, this, uh, this greatly father figure, no, this bastard uh, is raping the babies and he's standing for him. What a damn dog. It long rapes your babies and you still go there. Hallelujah. And then he wears a wig too. He wears a wig. More like that woman last night, who are you to judge? I said, I'm spiritual. I judge all things. He that is spiritual judge all things. He that has the Ruach of Yah judge all things. Did he not say when the Ruach comes, he will, uh, he will judge you? Okay, then I judge you. I have the Ruach. I don't have the damn Holy Ghost. Damn the Holy Ghost. Damn that dog. Who wants a ghost? Who likes ghosts? If you love ghosts, write and tell me. You've been taught all your life to be afraid of a ghost. Casper the friendly, the friendly little ghost. Right. The devil he was. Liar. And bred it in our minds. The stupidity of our parents. They didn't know any better. Yeah. One time y'all winked at our ignorance. Now he tells us to change your wicked ways. Do I'm going to burn you in hell. Hallelujah. The breeding of this mind to abandon all Torah discipline. There's a kingdom that shall rise. Are we not in a kingdom that, de that denounces the Torah of Yah? That has substituted this little faggot, effeminate thing they call Jesus. Uh, a creation of a mind that is so corrupt, so wicked, uh, so vile. Uh, a mind that segregated the masses of the people. Uh, Segregated your white and your black. If you ask the massive population where did that definitive come from, they will not even tell you. I'm going to give you a little history. There is one by the name of Carlos Binet. He was an uneducated bastard. He classified both animals, monsters, like the Bigfoot monsters and all the monsters. He classified them through color coding. You understand? And so the power of that took great root in this nation. When the poor people of Virginia, they saw these people being brought out of slavery through this great diabolical scheme of hell. And so the mindset was created that you are superior because you're white and they are black. Now that's the truth. Oh, I know that there is a restructure of all history. They don't teach your children a damn thing. I went to a segregated school. There is one thing they taught us in school. One thing above all. Discipline to learn. We may not have learned a damn thing, but they taught us discipline to learn. He created man. He created man. Hallelujah. 
Is the white man of America the same color as the Chinese of China? Sure he is. But he's yellow and he's white. Sure he is. Though they call the red man here in America, come on, Yisrael, we must denounce it. I, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to uh, placate this generation. I will deal with the things that cause division and dissension among Yah's people that are scattered throughout every nation. His people are on the continent of Africa. They're here. They're down in Mexico. They're in the Dominican Republic. They're in Britain. They're in France. They're everywhere. And their skin tone range from one extreme to the other. Damn your wicked skin color. It doesn't mean a damn thing. Now challenge me. Now don't come to me with your little juvenile third grade education. Think that, that you are superior in your knowledge. You don't have a damn thing but a internet uh, bits and pieces of jargons and sayings and here and there. That's all you have. Everything you know you've learned it from the internet. How about that? That's a bold statement, isn't it? Listen, Yisraya, this beating of the mind that set this abandonment of all Torah truth, the Shabbat, his name, the order of correct government, that all, the Mishra, all prosper. It is a political system, it is a mind that all, all are Yashak, all are saved, from the poorest of the derelicts to the riches of the riches. Because the riches of the riches, his heart is based upon principles that are so pure and so right. He doesn't need all of that to sustain him. Why, why does Mr. Bill Gates need $55 billion? And he has robbed the people that have worked in those small factories in India, in China, in the islands of the sea where they work all their mother away from her babies all day for $3. For this bastard to have all that. You tell me that's fair. You tell me that's, some, that's a social system. You tell me that is a social, a social, something that is social. That there is a camaraderie of oneness and unity among all. You tell me that's social acceptable. We are silly. If you buy that? That's social? It is not social. It is not political. That is from the gates of hell there. That's why there's a so evil on this line, moving expeditiously. I want you to understand. Turn quickly to Judges, the book of Joftim, the book of Judges. Yah has the right man set for every government. Let me show an example of one that said, no, nah, I know I'm not the man. Listen quickly. Uh, 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 Judges chapter 8, verse 22. And this is when Yah had given Yisrael the victory over the Midianites, the Midianites. It says in Judges 8.22, after this great victorious celebration, the men of Yisraya, they said unto Gidon, he was a hewer, he said unto Gidon, they said, we want you to mashal, to rule. Listen now, hear me please. We want you to rule over us. We want you to mashal. We want you to have power. We want you to have dominion. We want you to have rule, the authority to dictate, to instruct. They said, we want you to mashal over us. We want you to rule over us. They says, both Agam also included, also uh, both you and your sons and your son's sons also. Yah is the one that set the order of government. You see, the mind of Yisrael, yeah, we always want to uh, subside from Yah. When they came out of the land of Yisrael, they said, we will make us a damn God. We will have our own feast days. And that's what these pigs did. And we are that genetic DNA structure, Yisrael. They said, we want you to be our ruler because you have your shah. You have delivered us from the hands of the Midians or, or the Midian, those that are full of strife and full of anxiety. You delivered us. Did he or did Yah? Yah brought you out of your miseries and out of the, out of the dungeon of great Hoshet darkness. You look for light and there was no light, but in the midst of that, there was a word that he had, uh, he had began to raise up out of your bosom, that he had put that before mama, even before mama came, before mama, 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 mama came. Uh, he put it there. He had put a Torah of life uh, in you. 
give a damn how old you got. He's not going to let his treasure get lost. He's not going to lose one piece of silver. Because we are his redeeming power. For we shall redeem his name. His name shall be declared and pronounced. I like this. I wish I was sitting there listening to this. Hallelujah. And verse 22. And Gideon says to them. I will not shall. I will not rule over you. Neither my sons rule over you. He says for almighty Yahweh shall rule over you. Why is it not that we want Yahweh to rule over us? Why is it not that we don't want the Torah to rule in our mind? There's a government. They shall rise up out of this mindset that we are bred with every kind of corrupt, wicked thing. We deny Yah, we denounce Him. Our minds are given over unto every kind of folly and every kind of immature thing that satisfies us. We love to play, we love to jit chat, we love to chit chat, we love to shock buck and knock buck and all. Everything is funny. There's jocularity to everything. <laughs> Where's the strength of the Ush? Where's the strength of the head of Yisrael? He said, I will not rule over you. I'm not trying to rule over no one. Well, I'm a mighty man like you. Then you are small or dumpling of a small individual. Making comparison to me, you are feeble and weak as hell now. I am strong because Yah said the weak say you're strong. I am strong because Yah said you are weak, but say you're strong. I am rich, yet I'm poor because Yah said so. I am rich in your sure Hamashia. I'm strong because Yah said let the weak. I'm strong because Yah say say you're strong. I'm rich because he said, say you're rich. I don't need a damn Cadillac. I don't need that. I don't need a $10,000 diamond ring for what? I'm not an effeminate. I'm a man. I have the ring of the jewel of his knowledge that has enveloped my heart, my love, my love, my mind. I wouldn't sell that for 10,000 Cadillacs. Not me. How, how would I wash 10,000 Cadillacs? How would I wash 50 cars? How, how do you clean a 100 room house? Tell me, please. You go to that room, I haven't been in in two years. Dusty, smelly, and I don't give a damn if you're rich or poor. The spiders say, come on boys, let's, let's rock this whole house tonight. Hallelujah. He said, I will not rule over you. Verse 23. Yah shall rule. He shall shofat. He shall be your government. He shall govern you. He shall be the one that vindicates. He shall be the one that justifies. And set in order. It is the Torah of Yah. That sets all things in order. Yisrael. He said, I will not rule over you. And yet in the midst of that. At least I can imagine um, because the people began to pursue every kind of idolatrous activity there was. He said, I will not rule. I will not be your ruler. We need the government of Yah. We need the Mishra that is social and political. That is what shall rise up out of the debacle of the chaotic mess. How are these countries today, if you look at them, Egypt, they bombard the nation. They tore the nation to hell. And yet the people are more poor now than they were under Mr. Mubarak. They went to Libya and they dethroned that king. Mr. Mubarak Gaddafi. And yet the nation is more poor. You don't even hear about it in the news. They went and bombed the hell out of Iraq. For what? 19 terrorists and 11 of them came from Saudi, a South, from Mr. Papa Bush, uh, his friendship with the South family. Why not bomb the hell out of Saudi Arabia? 
who still oppress their women. They can't drive. They can't go out without a man. Why not bomb the hell out of them? And you bomb this nation. And you bring down Mr. Saddam Hussein. And now the government, do you hear about it in the news? Mr. Bush, it is finished. It's coming back to your damn house, Bush. Your babies are going to burn. Look, you burn the babies of that country. They're going to burn. You raise up one by the name of Mr. Osama bin Laden. You give him the weapons to fight against the Russian uh, insurgent. Uh, and they whip the hell out of the Russians uh, there for seven years. Uh, and the Russian says, we're losing too many. It's truth, hell is causing us money. These boys uh, don't give up. You bomb the hell out of that house. Uh, you destroy the structure. And you don't hear a damn thing about it. Nothing at all. But y'all raise up this country. He's going to get on her. She's powerful. She is the only superpower. I'm not afraid to speak like this. Damn America. Damn it. You don't love your country? You're a damn hypocrite. You don't love it. You love driving on the farm road. Well, I don't want to take no tax and they tax me too high. And then you got dogs like Romney worth $300 million and try to hide every penny. Paid 14% taxes. That's a damn shame. That's a damn shame. And then they oppress and suppress the poor. And they create systems to divide. You white and you're black. And so the poor white man doesn't realize he is just as poor. Go to Appalachian and ask those poor Caucasians there. He is just as dumb and stupid as hell. Well, it's because of the black folks, uh, you damn silly man. It's because of those in power. Who's in power? Yah has raised it up. Oh, I, don't, I, I don't get no kind of uh, shameful emotion when I talk like this. I say, well, I don't want to say this. Every white man goes to hell. Every white man. Every black man goes to hell. Every black, every man goes to hell. He calls himself white. Nothing but a damn social identity of a system to say that I got you. We are the created people of Almighty Yah. How about that? I like that. I like you, preacher. You make me mad. You make me mad, preacher, but I still like you. You get on me all the time, preacher, but I still like you. You show me how stupid I am all the time, preacher, but I like you. See, I show me that all the time. Any man think that he is something, he's, he's not worth a damn nickel. You deceive yourself. Hallelujah. Proceeding through this path, because I want to get to something important for your heart today. If I don't get put to one point, I want to get to it. I want to show you something. We will continue from here, all right? Hallelujah. 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 When there is, when the righteous man, when there's a righteous government, uh, there's shalom among the people. There's shalom when there's a righteous rule. I want to show you an example of that kind of government. We are going to see a government that is so ruthless. I am not worried about the Illuminatis. I'm not worried about them setting up FEMA camps throughout America. You're in prison here. You're in bondage here in what you call democracy. You work 10, 12 hours a day from your home. I will never forget the other day or some weeks back, the woman from Federal Express. I walked out because I was hurting. My, my old knees get a little, come on, they were hurting. Working all day, you feel the pains. And so she says to me, uh, what's wrong? I said, I'm hurting. She says, I know that one. I leave home. I'm up around 4 or 5. I'm out of the house. And I don't get back home until 8 p.m. every night. I felt sorry for the woman. You see how the world has captivated her to spend 40 years to pay for a damn shack. Work all of her life to pay for a building that the termites are going to eat up and when she's dead someone else will get it it's stupid to me it doesn't make any sense at all and these are the educated bright 
yuppies and boppies. This is the social elite. These are the ones that keep a creative economy going. Now, they sell to you according to your damn loss. Can I proceed? Here's a government that is so rich in the Torah power of Yah, in the book of 2nd Shemu'ah, Shemu'el, Shemu'yah, 2nd Samuel. And then I want to get to Revelation because I want to point out something for you. It says here in 2nd Samuel, chapter 8, verse 15, this is the government of David, David. Listen what it says here, 2nd Samuel, 8, 15. It says, and David, he reigned, he was the one that mashal, he reigned over kul, all, the entirety, the fullness, he reigned over all Yisra'ah, and David, what a, what a profound word he uses here. He used the word executed. Now, if I ask us what that means, we think we know because uh, we know everything. We're an arrogant generation, we will not say, but he used this word, and when uh, diligently began to search, uh, it, it is the word asa. He did, he formed, he fashioned. That's what that means. He fashioned, he executed uh, mishpat, judgment. You will not have a nation that is sadiq without the mishpat, without the judgment of Almighty Yah. It must, he executed Mishpat, he executed the Sadiqa, the justice, based upon the principles of the Torah. I got two million dollars, I pay a lawyer of one million, I get off for murdering you for stealing all your money. A man steals 50 million dollars, he goes to jail for six months. A boy robs to feed his family, he gets 50 years. The injustice, it is not Sadiq Torah, it's wrong. A man get caught bringing here a bus load, a ship load of cocaine. He gets nine years and a boy that's caught with cracked rocks. I heard a young man, he called me the other day. I don't know how he found me. He's in the institution, the federal prison down there in Atlanta. I said, how did you hear of me? Because someone told someone, someone told this one, someone told that one because they from the, from the family told them that, that I, I, I need two questions I need to ask you. I said, tell me, son, why are you in prison? He said, I got caught with X amount of cracked rocks and some marijuana, and he got 25 years. And the man that brought over the damn boatload, they catch him, he gets three years. That's not the Sadiq of young. Yeah. It's not a just judgment. It is injustice. But he judged with justice, with sadiq. He judged according to the righteousness of the character of Yah presented through the revelation of Torah to all his people. That's a just mishraim. So if we look at no man will be able to buy or sell. And we have these proponents are teaching that you must have silver or gold. Then what do you say to the poor woman that's in Mumbai, India? I hear from these pastors all the time from India. And they try to make their letters so personal. My precious Reach Dawid Yisraya, I found your website. I know it's a form letter. I'm here in the ghettos of Mumbai. I've been here 7, 10, 15 years. They send pictures all the time. What can I do? There's only one word I can give them. At least the poor has the message of the Mizrach and the teaching of the power of Torah delivered unto them. His government was just. He shall rise up a government that the mind is so dark. We see the tentacles of that in this nation. They would kill your babies and say, <laughs> that's not terrorism. They would bomb your houses and say, <laughs> those 19, that, they were the terrorists. They will drop a bomb buster on your house that rattles miles of territory. I will teach us one day I'm researching the nuclear fission and fusion bomb. What? What type of a satanic mind that constructs something of such devastation of death? We know that how Shatan was a what from the beginning? A murderer. Why? Because he did not dwell in Torah. That take a mind 
of hell to create a bomb that will burn your babies and burn them with fire and the fire is never seen that's not from a mind that is socially accepted that's not from a mind that is politically aligned with uh, care for all people I don't think so and when a man can burn your babies and burn them from miles away that the burns burn down listen not like one gets burned in a fire but it burns down to the bone of the skin it consumes the flesh that's a hellacious burning that's burning that's burning there baby that's burning there. that that come on that's a burning that I, yeah you will be done hallelujah hallelujah oh man oh man And I show you Yah's government. Last one, I wanted to establish government first, and then I will show you the government that shall rise out of a conscience that has no knowledge of Torah, has abandoned what is all that is sadiq, sadiqha, that is right. There is nothing that is sadiqha or right unless it is constituted, unless the principles are based out of Torah. It's wrong. It may seem right. You may ponder the matter. It may look right. But it's wrong. It's not right. It's wrong. This is y'all's government. Psalms to Helium. 93 verse 5. You have to understand the meaning of words to understand this. Psalms 93 verse 5. Thy weed utters unto thee above. He identifies the most prominent thing, uh, which was the Edah. He says, Yah, your Edah, your testimonies. Your testimony and the Edah of Yah is always, listen, the Edah, the power of that testimony is always the testimony of Yah constructed according to Torah, wisdom, and understanding. So his Edda, the testimony of Yah, that we says, uh, he says, uh, your testimony is Yah. He uses the word, they are, they are very, they are exceedingly, they are powerful, they are mighty. He said, they are me, or they are very sure. You say the word Omein because you're sure of it. The messenger said, the wicked shall burn in hell. You shall destroy all wicked. You say, oh mine. Because you have confidence in that. It is faithful, uttered from Yah. And you have the assurance of that. That's what the word omain mean. Oh, omain, omain, omain. And so the word of Yah is government. It is a sure government. It is one that is omain because there are principles to his government. We need to understand what, is the, what, what are the pillars of the government of Yah. Well, the pillars of this government, uh, it is one that is steeped in death. Uh, it is gone up. It is a mindset to steal, uh, to rob, to break down, uh, to pillage and to take Yisra'ah. And this damn government does that. It does that. It robs from the poorest of the poor. It robs their humanity, their strength. It puts them on so many drugs, they have no confidence in nothing but drugs. I was reading this morning uh, how that when people do this colon obsessy, colon obsessy, that they have a pill now, four pills you take. I would be afraid to take that. And it takes everything that you have in your body out, everything. you never intended for that to be. He never intended. He intended for us to eat the dietary law because we need that in us. There are certain things that something must remain there. The body feeds on that. Just like the cow with the stomachs, they, they egogitate and they chew on the cud. Just like his word is hidden in our bosom, but we egogitate it. It comes forth and we eat on that constantly. He never intended for that. This death mind conscious today. But this is the government of God. This is what we need. He says that not only that, but your government, uh, it is sure and it is a pure set of partners. It is Kadosha. It says why? Because your government, your Edah, it is befitting uh, to your Be'at, to your house, your rule. Oh, Yah forever. Oh, Lam Viat. He is forever. 
When you're dead and gone, his name shall reign. You can deny it all you want to. You can substitute it. I don't give a damn if you're 109. You can reject it. Well, it was the name of the Lord Jesus set me free. No, it was not that. It was Yah. He's going to save his whole house. Listen, you walk, we walked in our sins for years, but that was Yah's blow here. You have elect of Yah. I don't give a damn what someone said. He's going to save his house. And when your mind heard his Torah, it was no rustling or battling. That's right, hallelujah. He's going to save his whole house. The word has never lost one. You know, she said, oh, that was written in the book of life, and he is. I've lost none, except that one that was perdition for hell and all the name talking in the world was not going to deliver and all the talking in the world is not going to deliver your wicked son or your hoish wicked daughter hallelujah I was talking to the ark yesterday and you know we are people that we will defend what is ours but I, I defend truth and I made this statement I said you know what it saddens me that my mother did not teach my sister to be a woman and to understand the beauty of a woman. That bothers me. It does. She didn't teach my sister the beauty of a woman. And I said that because my natural biological sister called me. And of course I said to her, I don't want to hear you talk. I do the talking. I don't let her talk. What well, Dave, I said, no, be quiet. I'm doing that. I said, no, you're not doing that. So I began to explain things. She said, well, what about this? You see, she realized how ignorant she was. Then she wanted to hear. She thinks she has a volume of understanding. She had nothing. I said, you can't tell me nothing. Period. It troubled me that my mother did not teach. She's a lonely. She'll be 60 years old soon. She's lonely. She's lonely. She has no one. Well, what about her coming here? She can't come here like that. Uh-uh. No, sir. We're not allow her. She is so lonely. It's so sad. It's so pitiful. She comes all the way from New Orleans for the whole house, Baptist whole house uh, family reunion the second Sunday. You silly thing. See, these are the things that Yah hates. He hates their feast days. And for some reason, we think that my family is not dysfunctional. Well, your natural family, all of them are dysfunctional. If you don't function in the Torah of Yah, they're silly, they're dysfunctional, they're nutty as a Jane Parker fruitcake. You can substantiate them all you want to, but they are dysfunctional. They're nutty as hell. She says to me, my son weighs 380 pounds. I say, oh my. What is he eating? Well, we're eating healthy. I said, that doesn't mean a damn thing. You can go to Earth Fair and folks 300 pounds go and they say they're eating healthy. It's all about eating portions and knowing how to eat. You can go to Earth Fair and buy all you want to. The same chicken that has the same calories as what you go to Walmart and buy. And no different. Same can of soup you buy that has the same cold sodium content and many times more. And you go to Walmart and buy. But it's organic. Oh, everything y'all made is organic, you jackass. Yeah. Silly man. What, what, where did any substance come from? It came from y'all. Is it organic? Sure it is. Y'all yeah. made it. Not man. So it's all organic. Well, what does that mean? You think you, you be smart? No, I'm simply saying that organic, that it all goes back to the earth. It goes back. I don't care what they have created out of the organic mass of Yah. It's going back to dust. It's going back to dirt. That's why it's organic. Hallelujah. I injected that. I feel sorry for her. What really do I say? Oh, you train up your daughters and your sons in the way that they should walk. And when they're old, you train. You see how you train a dog? You train that beast, don't you? 
You take time. I can't wait till the fall. I can, yeah. But I got to get me another Rottweiler. I like these, the ones that the Ark have. I want something that's a monster. Big. Something when you see him, you say, ouch. That's what I want. I want a dog. As a matter of fact, I'd rather have a pony of a dog. Big. The big, the better. Speaks volume. Not fat. Big. Muscular. Run him in the field. I want a dog. Not a poodle, but to train him. And it takes discipline. And even when you train that dog, if you give him to someone else, the dog will still do the right thing. So you train your children in the way that they should walk and when they're old, that they shall not depart from the ways of Yah, that they will rejoice and delight. We train them how to shake their ass. We chain, train them how to shake their ass. Mamas train their little boys to dress up in girl clothes and shake like a woman. They do it all the time. We train ours in the discipline and the rudiment of Torah and the delight of what Yah says. Yisra'ya, do that. And it takes an effort that is effervescent. It must light up that the children when you're training and teaching, they must see that light in you. We have fell you miserably on that behalf. The whole nation. Just like our forefathers. That's why they went back into the sin that they went in. I want to readdress something that I omitted the last time that I taught. It shows you my fragile nature and my inability to grasp the magnitude of this. Uh, unless I have the Ruach uh, the Spirit of Yah. Again. We shall revisit Revelation. And then I will read that in Gilyana 13 and um, 17. But I want to begin here in Revelation Gilyana. Hear me, Yisraya. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. <clears throat> it is wise for us to understand the speech of this Novi, this messenger. He says here, And I, Nasab, I stood... And for one to say that I nasab, it is to imply that uh, I was in the appointed place for that appointed time uh, that Yah had commanded. He was the one that had erected this whole scenario. He said, and I stood uh, at the appointed place uh, in the perfect wisdom of Yah, in the perfect law, in the perfect wisdom of Torah. That's how we should answer all men out of the perfect excellence of the Torah of Yah. Not out of our little childlike emotions. Will you hurt my feelings? Damn your feelings. I don't give a damn about your emotions, your feelings. They have no value. They have no, no value at all. On the I stood. Revelation 13, 1, Giliana. He said, I stood in this place, and I stood upon the sands, literally the sands, but he saw the multitude of the masses of the people. It's one thing that when Yah uses the word sand, he's dealing with the numerics of things. I don't care how many senses they have, they can't tell you the population of the earth. I don't care what China does, they cannot tell you the population of the earth. No man, Yah knows that. They can figuratively, they can dissect and count every hair, of your head but yet every hair of our head is applied a number in the conscience of Yah that's to show us how valuable and how important Yisra is unto him that when you lose one hair as our Zohin Rabbi Yah taught us in the great incident of Nebuchadnezzar in those mighty messengers of Yah that not one fiber of the hair was singed you should lose none. You'll lose nothing. He's not going to lose. That's why Yosef say, when you come out of this pagan land, I know we have been here because of our wickedness uh, under this shibuth, under this captivity, the slavery. Take my bones out of here. Get them up out of here. I don't want my bones to stay here. That's why he is going to eviscerate the wicked off the land. And the bones of Yisraya, the street of Yisraya, shall be administered from the city of our Abayah. Yeah. I stood in the place, 
I stood on the sands of the arm on the massive waters, uh, on the floods of doctrines uh, and innuendos and teachers uh, and metaphors and all kinds of concepts. Uh, I stood uh, on the midst of their rubbish. It has that implication as well. There are seven times seven implications of this one. That's a simple form that I, that you are grants for us to understand today. All right? It's not how you read it. He said, I saw this behemoth. I saw this beast. Listen. I saw him room, rise. Just like you spell R-O-O-M, room. He rise up to feel. When Yah uses the word room, it is to rise up and to feel. And his ru'aka and, and the train of Yah are the incense. Feel the bed of Yah. So I saw this one rise up out of the sea, the multitude, the masses of the people, having seven head. Now he has that because this is the perfection of the kingdom of the rule of Almighty Yah. In order to understand that, turn quickly, hold that in Revelation. And I want to read this out of Yeshua, just one verse here, Isaiah chapter 11, and verse 1 and 2 quickly. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of the Shebe, of Yeshua, and it shall be a branch, shall grow out of his roots. It says, and the Ruach of Yah shall rest upon him, uh, the Ruach of Hukha, or the wisdom of Yah, and the Ruach of Da'at, or Binah, understanding, shall rest upon him, uh, the Ruach of Musa, the counsel of Yah's uh, mind, the counsel of the concepts of Yah, shall rest upon him, uh, and, the, uh, and the Ruach of Koach, of might, uh, this is the power of Yah. This is the power of His government. This is a superficial power that shall rise up to show that there's a law of perfection. And the law of perfection denotes one thing, that I am your Redeemer. I deliver you. I will your shock. I will save you. That's what it implies. I will prove it. You don't have to buy it. But in the end, you're going to have to eat it. He said, And the Ruach of Da'at, and the Yare, the fear of Yah. See, you know, you know a true messenger of Yah. Does it say that last Ruach, the Yare, the fear of Yah? Does it say the fear of Yah? Hold that. Turn quickly. We're going back to Revelation 13. But I want to read something out of Revelation, one verse here, two verses. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 14. The last power of his kingdom or the Ruach or the Ruachim of Yah, it was the fear of Yah, wasn't it? Was that the truth? That was at the beginning of the Nobi Yeshua. It always has been. Now look at the end time message of the Milach that commands what should be taught unto Yisraya. Revelation. Giliana, chapter 14, verse, verse 6. And I saw another Melach fly in the midst of Hashem am, having the everlasting of the Olam Viad Bezurach, of the messenger, to declare unto them that dwell on the earth, and to how many nations, some nation, or every nation, every am, every people, every nation, every goem, to every nation, not only to every nation, but to every kind of people, every kind of kindred, and to every kind of lotion, every kind of language, every tongue, Yisraya, and the mass and the whole of the people. This is the message. Same with a loud or a kara, a loud or kol kara, loud voice of great power, of great substance, of great might. Sam with a loud voice. What does it say? What is that word after that? Yeah. Say it loud. Yeah. What does it say? Everyone say that. What does it say? Yeah. What does it say? Yeah. What does it say? Fear. Yare. Fear Yah. And give honor to Him. 
for the hour of his judgment. We better feel the judgment of Yah. The hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made the heavens. Not only the heavens, the ulam. He made the sea and the fountains of water. Was that not the last ru'ach, the fear of Yah? There's no fear of Yah today. Well, you don't fear Yah. I know you Baptist devils don't fear him. You Pentecostal freaks. You church of God and Christ devils and faggot men that are in your hoish pulpits uh, and these uh, defeminized women who think they can sound like a man and, and I'm preaching like a man and I've got a ministry. You have one damn ministry, woman. That's to teach the women how to be a woman, not to be a damn jackass uh, and a damn silly buffoon. Uh. Your ministry teach them how to be a loving wife and to keep the damn house clean. Uh. You are like, like a damn jackass. Uh, silly. I can't stand a damn silly woman. Never have. Even in the world I didn't like that. Don't clown around me, woman. I'll never like that. Never like improper ways. Isn't that right? Never. Don't do that around me, woman. No. Not here. You may do it there. We've been married over 35 years and we've never really just sat around just <laughs> never. Cannot go around. Torah of Yahweh, you cannot get around. Torah of Yahweh, it is so high. You can't climb over it so hard. You can't run around it. Oh, it is so low that it reaches down to you. Hallelujah. Cannot go around. Ah. Hallelujah. You like that? All right. Hallelujah. She'll know what a man is because she has a man ahead in her house. And she knows that that man, he is responsible as this man is to him, to him. And he loves me like a man, so she'll know what a man. Don't you mess with that issue. Conan can't do that. Hallelujah. 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 He says, I was at the Nassab. Perfect mind. I saw this one having seven heads, a kingdom that is ruled by this entourage of some of the most wicked demonic powers of lust, of corruption, of every kind of ill power there is. But there's a kingdom that shall stand. And that's the Melchutz, the power of his Torah that dwells within the bosom of Yisrael. You see how that woman wanted to protect last night this damn beast Israel Hawkins down there? She doesn't even know the damn man. I don't trust in no man's book. Hell, he wrote that he's a liar. He said that he and his brother were the two messengers Bam, he fell that one. He said three years ago that nuclear bombs, bam. He said it years ago, nuclear, bam. He's a damn liar. He's a jokester and a damn clown. And yet she resisted me for a liar. And she tells me she knows the truth. Oh, no, you, you silly heifer. I'll let her talk to, let her see how silly and how stupid she really is. She protect this damn beast. He's an adulterous bastard. And he loves those young black girls from the islands. That's what his entourage or what he calls his wives consists of. He loves the young little black girls. What a damn freak. What a man at my age looking for a 20-year-old wife. I wouldn't even do that. I wouldn't even insult me. 
And I will not even insult a child that I'm, I could be father to. What would I want a 35-year-old wife? I would not want that. Not me. If she's 50, 55, I can go with that even 60. What do I want a little child trying to train a child? I want a woman that if I had no wife that is mature. She has maturity. She has the sensibility. She has, she's a wife. She's a hand. Not a silly woman. That's why when a man finds a wife, he finds an excellent thing. He finds a beautiful thing. Hell, you can't find them because there are no women training the young ones how to be wise. They trained them to be a dirty hoe now and a damn little slut. Show your ass off. You don't even bathe, heifer. You stink. Show your ass off. Shake it. Flip your hips. Let the, let the, let the low. Just like that little whore killer child down there in Florida and she gets out scotch-free. Isn't that amazing? Uh, Slots of a whore. Raise up a damn Britney Pale and this little Jezebel. Uh, there are women that are in the hood you can go to and give you a much more magnificent story than this little slut in a mom and daddy's house. Uh, and they pay $20,000 a whop to hear this little stupid whore speak I will come for 5,000 you don't even have I will drive and tell you you wicked folks and all your Christian conservatism and your liberalism you're going to hell you're wicked you're vile and God's going to burn you up he's going to burn your damn babies your little tabs because you burn them you suck them out of the womb and you kill them you're going to pay for that hallelujah I saw this magnitude of this beast stand up, uh, and I saw him, he had ten horns. And upon his ten horns, or uh, upon his horns, uh, there were ten asaras, ten uh, crowns. And every one of those crowns represents the power of the Spirit to rule over the ten tribes uh, of the northern kingdom of Israel. That's what it represents. It represents that. They shall be ruled over the kingdom. Yehuda in its self-righteousness uh, that thinks because of my identity I have a, uh, I have a superior consciousness. You tribes of Ephraim, uh, don't try to grasp it all. Just hear me, all right? Uh, you get it. And so it's the contention of a government and a battle. Uh, and what I preach on the prosperity, I will, if Zakin Yaramaya permits me on this cafe imat, I want to show you that, all right? Let me preach that, and then I will show you the blessings of Yah. As I began, I don't know, three, four weeks ago, I want to conclude that message, all right? Well, let me finish here, and then I will bring this to much more clarity when you see this, all right? We're going to teach on this in the hall, though. Don't worry. I want to get to one point today, and then it may take me to next year about to finish this point, but you must hear it, all right? Hallelujah. So he had this, uh, the Asara, which is the power, the crown or the diadem, uh, is the power to protect, uh, to attack. Uh, is not this nation crowned as the superior power or the world power or the superpower? So can she attack whomever she wants to? Sure she can. When Mr. Reagan goes down to Granada, when Mr. Reagan goes down to Granada and attack a little people like that, hell don't even have a bomb. Don't even have a tank. You go attack someone like that, you are a cowardless, shiftless damn beast. You want to fight, get a man. Fight with a man. Fight me. You want to throw down some hands, come on. You go down there with F-16, you are a damn coward. He's going to burn in hell too. You never, listen, Yisra'ah, of all things, always be cognizant of this. You never intrigue the poor, the only or the dal, the poor. Don't do them wrong. If there's one valuable experience Evangelist Hartsfield taught me, he says to me one day, he says, son, you're no different than what you call the derelict on the street. You're no different. You have the same thing he had. You're full of sin, you're corrupt, you're wicked. He says there's only one thing, that it was the hasid, the election of Yah, that he elected you. 
you have nothing to boast in. And don't ever do them wrong. I will not. I will do more right by a man that's poor and smelling like a 10 yards to get back than those that are arrogant and think they possess something. You understand? I will. I'll feed them every day if they want something to eat, man. If I tell you what, if you take this money, as I said to that man that day, he had more, both his legs were gone. I said, I'm going to give you some No, one were gone. I said, I'm going to give you some money. Now I want to tell you something, buddy. If you take this money, use it for anything less than what you said. I said, you see that other leg? I'm going to take that one off. You hear me? I'm going to take it. You won't have no legs. He laughed at me. When I came back, you see how precise my witness. My Ishmael said, there he is right there. He's coming out of the big store, buying food. I, I wanted to stop. Of course, when I'm headed home, I don't stop for nothing and say, it, it, it was right for you to do that because you didn't want me to take that other leg. You've been in bad shape then. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I saw this nation of power that rise up. It comes in a similitude that the kingdom, uh, Mishra, is perfect. It's going to bring about the social political change. Isn't that why they're always voting? Mr. Barack Obama is tired of our country, you jackasses. If you built something three, 237 years, uh, and you tell me a little has-been to come in, uh, in three years he tear down your whole damn country, you don't have a damn thing. Uh. You tell me three years, Mr. Barack Hussein Obama? Mr. Rush Limbaugh said other day, quote, oh, I, I believe the country will be all right with four more years of Mr. Obama. And the conservatives said, oh, not Mr. Limbaugh. It's all a shenanigan of a game. He is going to be back again. He is the puppet of the powers that be. He's going to serve them well when he leaves office. He's going to become a multi-millionaire. He and his wife were not even practicing law. They were not even, the, even their bar certificate. They, they were not even practicing lawyers. Uh, they had run up into some trouble with, uh, with, with some kind of uh, uh, adjudication of matters. Uh, they, they're not, they weren't even practicing law. This was the man that they raised up. Uh, did y'all raise up Pharaoh? Yeah. Mr. Obama says, man, I ain't going to vote for him or vote against him. Yeah. In all things you give, to run to Yah. To da to ya oh, to da to ya oh, to da to da for Mr. Barack Hussein. Obama is my president. Hallelujah. By the way, you that give this to the CIA, tell Mr. Obama I know he like fried chicken. We got, we take him to Vaughn's cafeteria. You fried up right. He wants broccoli, whatever he wants. We we will do him right. Tell him come on down. We'll take care of it. That's right. If he came, I will make sure the grass is mowed. I will make sure. Mr. Obama, how you doing, sir? Uh, you want to play some basketball? I'll take my little boy, Ab. We'll take you and one of your. That's right. We'll take you on. You can't stop me now. Mm-mm. You can't do that, Mr. Barack. We must get real. We must get revelation of this truth, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so, and upon his head, and upon his head, uh, the name of Nittas uh, of blasphemy. The name of Jesus is a blasphemous name. It says at the pinnacle of the whole house of Catholicism uh, and all religion, even the Islamic, even Mr. Mr. Farrakhan respects that name. Damn the name of Jesus. Uh, I don't respect it. And the name of blasphemy, uh, he shall rise up out of, the, uh, out of this debacle of community of nature. Is not the world in a mess? Yeah. You don't know what government is in the world today. Uh, you don't know what power rules today. They're in power today and they're cast down tomorrow. So out of the midst of the debacle, there shall arise this uh, political savvy type of mentality that the minds uh, have already been prepared uh, to receive. Uh, that's why we have abandoned Torah. We abandoned everything that is truthful, everything that is of Yah, everything that brings Shalom. We abandon that. Uh, we're people full of envy. We're full of strife. Uh, we're full of all kind of bedlam and every kind of folly. And so out of the midst of that shall rise this persona of power, and it shall, it shall be the light to the minds of the masses. Oh, I want to be like him. He is so nice. I want to show you something. Don't get lost. Please hear me. Please. This is labor intense here. I want to be like Mikey. I want to be like LB. Nobody wants to be like y'all commanded us to be. 
Bouncing a, a ball is not going to get you any kind of privileges with Yah. Hallelujah. So out of the midst of this debacle of this construct that is constructed by Yah, he is still ruling. He put his man there and he turns the heart of the king. Mr. Barack Hussein Obama is Yah's man. Mr. Putin there in Russia is Yah's man. Mr. Who there in China is Yah's man. Mr. Fidel Castro, Roll Castro in Cuba, they are Yah's men. You understand? Mr. Chavez there in Venezuela, he is Yah's man. All of them. Yah's have raised them up. And these are usually little nerdy kids. They have no, they really have no kind of personality, really. So they pursue things like that. To give them some kind of identity in, the, in, in this world that is so surreal. You understand Yisrael? He's Yah's man. He raised them up. That's why I don't pray against Mr. Obama. If our enemy is hungry, feed him. I will do right. I've said to us when Mr. Shehi, Miss, Miss, Mrs. Uh, uh, what's, what's her name? Down there in Texas. All talking about the war and getting out of Iraq. Mr. Mrs. Uh, Shanae, uh, whatever her name, they went to protest Mr. Bush when he went home for, for retreat. And they got protested. They probably had a hundred. Of course, the news media are going to say there were, there were just numerous people. They know it was 100, jackass. You can count a hundred people. And I said, the only thing Mr. Bush had to do is go out there and say, Miss Shea, uh, Sheena, y'all forgive me, I can't remember her name, but it was somewhere in that, that utterance. Uh, call Bob Fat House, uh, Bob's Pig Bank. Bob, bring me three hogs down here. Not hogs, but hogs. Uh, how much you want to make, Mr. Bush? Uh, I want them hogs about 260 pounds a piece. And bring some of that real sweet Texas cold tea with ice. And bring some of that tater salad. Not potato, but tater salad. And bring it down. And set up out here and roast them pigs right here while they're protesting. And let the room of that pig fat uh, just saturate this area. And you walk out there and say, uh, Miss Shane Han, how are you doing? You, I, you know it's one thing beautiful about this Constitution of America here. Yeah? You got the freedom of speech. So I, I'm so glad. Here. And what a most beautiful place uh, to do it right here in front of my house. Uh, here in Texas. Uh, uh, Bob set them tables up. Uh, Bless this fool, Miss Shane uh, Bless it. Oh, God, we bless you for this fool. God bless it. God bless it. God bless it. God bless it. Amen. That's the way the heifer would have prayed. See, he was too dumb to operate like that. He was too stupid. And say, y'all eat some pork. Bob got some of the best pork down here in the south. Uh, look at that big old hog. And Bob, they eat that hog and they get drowsy and sleep. And say, well, he is a nice man. Although he's my enemy. Uh, Shehi. Uh, Shehi. That's her name, Shehi. You don't hear nothing about the heifer, do you? Just a prop of delusion for the eyes of the people. So this one shall arise, this Jesus, this Christo, the Christ, uh, the Messiah, not the Messiah, but this, this one that shall bring about this uh, constitution uh, out of the midst of all of this chaos that shall bring a political, a social system uh, that shall be fair and operate uh, with favor to all. That's a damn lie. This shall come out of the gates of darkness, out of hell. Yah has raised up this kingdom, uh, and he is the one that pronounces it. Uh, when, when Micaiah, Micaiah, when Micaiah the Achmelach, uh, when he says, let it be, it shall be, uh, and the restraining force shall be moved back, uh, and all hell shall come forth, uh, and the streets of Yisrael shall be the Ruach HaKodesh, uh, the spirit of Yah, that will lead and guide us in all of the power of the Torah hope, uh, or Tigva of life in us. It is right, my Zachin. It is absolutely right. Quickly. Listen to this, this in verse 2. And the beast which I saw, he was like a leopard quick. A leopard is quick. We will get into the dimension of this in a later teaching as I teach this. And also his feet was as the feet of a bear. There is nothing more powerful with strength than the feet of a bear. And his feft. It was like the feft or the mouth of an 
iri of a lion. It is says, and this tanim, this powerful kingdom, or this beast, the one that had power, gave him his strength, gave him his power, did not give him Yah's power. You must understand now, I want to show you something as I go forward that will totally astound us and to bring us into great clarity. It says he gave him his power. We know that all power comes from Almighty Yah. He gave him his power. His power. Do you all hear that? He gave him his power. Let me show you a little more clarity of that as I read this often here in the book of Lucas. In the book of Luke, the fourth chapter. Luke chapter 4. It says that the dragon Hashatan, the very wheel, the very passion of Hashatan, was transmitted or transported into the mind of this one, into the kingdom construct of that kingdom. Now look at what Hashatan says to Yoshua here in Lucas chapter 4. And Yoshua was full of the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, was he not? Yeah. Look what it says in verse 6. And Hashatan said unto him, All oh, this power, what power? Go back to verse 5. And Hashatan take your shoe up into a high mountain. He showed unto him how many? Some of the kingdoms? A few of the kingdoms? So if it's all the kingdoms, would that include America? Would that include the continent of, uh, of, of, of Africa? Would that include Asia and, and Russia and China? Would that include Australia? Are not all these nations... Did he show him some of the nations or all the nations? He showed him all the nations. He showed him all the nations. Sweden, Finland, all of them. Germany, France, Iceland. He showed him all the nations uh, of the world in a moment of time. It was such a, it was such a powerful presentation that and he showed him all the sin and the wickedness of those nations. Isn't that the only thing you see on television today, the sin of the nation? I was reading the other day, I didn't read, I read the capture, that the Democratic Convention, uh, that, uh, you know, the type of uh, sex slaves that will be brought to Charlotte for those three years, three days. It will be, you think they're coming, you, what, what, you trust someone uh, that's coming to a city to get drunk, and to have every kind of sexual uh, impropriety there is. Uh, they're going to lay with men, men with men, men with men, women with women, women with women, uh, and all kinds of wickedness. They're going to get drunk. And not only that, but down at the Republic Convention in Tampa, then the fags or the bathhouses uh, for the fags are offering uh, these fag closet covered uh, Republican candidates uh, a place to have an experience. Uh, this is what it's all about. They're ordering condoms by the thousands, uh, by the hundreds of thousands, uh, just for about 8,000 people. You got to be a machine. Man, what kind of drugs are they putting in that whiskey? What kind of drugs are they going to be on? It's nothing but an orgy of every kind of nida, filth that one can imagine. And believe me, those girls are already arriving in Charlotte. They're not going to be standing in the Dollar Motel. They're going to be out there and miss the prestigious Valentine and Providence in Sutter City, Charlotte. And that's where they shall be eating cheese. That's where they're going to be. Every shape, every color skin, every size. Ask Mr. Rush Limbaugh. He goes down to the island because he likes those little black gals. You understand? These bastards. They like those little chocolate-covered black gals in the islands. That is right. Ask Mr. Limbaugh. Hallelujah. He showed him all the kingdoms in the moment of time. Every kingdom. Again in Revelation, it says that, that he gave him his power. He showed him all the kingdoms in a moment of time. And Hashatan said unto him, all this power will I give you. Did he offer it to Yeshua? He said, all this power will I give you and the honor of them. For that, this has always astounded me. For that, for that is delivered unto me. And this is the catalyst. And to whomsoever I will give this power... I will give it. Just like the prince and the powers of the air did not know Yoshua, if they had known him, they would not have impelled him. 
Then the man that Yah shall raise up for the end time destruction to bring about some of the most cataclysmic mayhem of hell upon the nations, uh, he's Yah's man. Yah said, I raise him up and the devil said, I give you my power. I couldn't give it to his right hand, the one they call Yoshua Hamashiach. But I give it to you. And Yah says, uh, just like I planned it, my man, he's got it all. In control. Y'all got it all in control. That's, that's our assurance and I want to satisfy your bosom with that today. You that are listening via the live broadcast, live stream, uh, send me an email. Hallelujah. We have security and assurance of confidence in the book. I'll make it plain. Well, if you didn't cuss so much, when you answered the telephone, do you say hello? 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 Huh? Sure you do. But if I said hell, it's, it's, it's an Allah. I'm not laying an anathema upon you, Yisrael. These jackasses, they're dumb. Oh, yeah, the Baptist preacher was there in here. Uh, <clears throat> forgive me, yeah. <clears throat> And God caused the jackass to speak on the Balaam of the jackass. If you are God is a jackass, he can use anything. He's not using you, beast. They will say that. But of course, if the messengers say that because you're so full of your, your hatred for Yah. And yet you can listen to your boys talk, what's up, play a dog. You watch television with that damn filth spewing. And you're lying. <laughs> they said on TV. <laughs> I said to my wife, it was this man. Uh, he did something. And that was a reciprocation of what he did. And then when the reciprocation came, he said, oh, hell no. I mean, he said, there were little children. And he said, oh, hell no. And the way he said it, which it was, come on, man. He said, oh, hell no. Uh-uh, you don't do that. We got if the messenger, they, his mouth is just like that woman. You cussing, you ignorant, sottish woman. You don't even know what Allah Akhala is. This is what the whole has taught you. I can define what I say with definitives. I can show you the origin, the etymology of my words, my speech. I know what I'm saying. You're such a damn fool, you don't even know what I'm saying. You should say, why you don't understand what I say to you? You don't even understand my speech when he says to Yisra'ya. Can I move my Achyosipia? I shall. Hallelujah. It says, and he gave him his seat, him his power, his ku'aka, and his leba, his seat, his inclination, his desire, his passion, his determination of will. What is the determination of that will? To assault Ya, to break down the power of his testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. To destroy it, to infuse the damn gods and the filthy lords and the damn wicked Jesus. You got the white Jesus. Come on, the concept came out of that damn corrupt mind, but you got the black Jesus, you got the white Jesus, you got the Mexican Jesus, you got the Hindu Jesus, you got the Vietnam Jesus, you got the Korean Jesus. They all got their own Jesus. They all got their damn Jesus. You got the rich white Jesus, say, damn the poor white Jesus. All those poor folks up there in Appalachian, they're poor. They're dirty. They look, they look bizarre. Because such inbreeding with cousins and cousins. Come on, say what you want to. The different Jesus for them than Mr. Bush Jesus. The rich Jesus is different than the poor Jesus. It is the truth, man. Hallelujah. I'd rather, if I die, let me die in, uh, is, what's his name? Uh, and Cheryl. Matthew. Let me die in the field. And my heart goes out, this is the perfect place for it to go out. How about that? How about that? Hallelujah. This kingdom shall arise with great, and one of the last power of the resolve, it shall have this, 
authority, great authority. And when it arrives with authority, when someone says, uh, I got the authority, they're telling you I have the power, I have the might, and I have a mandate that's much more superior than you. He's going to arise with every substance of that. Well, where is his tukaf, his authority coming from? It's coming from the Most High. He ordained the kings. He raises up the king. Did he raise a pharaoh? Where did his authority come from? And when Pharaoh was said, I will let them go, who would harden his heart? Was it Yah or Pharaoh? Okay. So he's coming with all to, with all authority. His mandate is coming from one that is much more superior that he doesn't even know. His heart or his laba, his purpose that he shall give to the rule of this vile kingdom, the one that shall rise up with a superior religious aura, with a superior business akum, he shall rise up that way. And there is one element about his kingdom that you must understand. Please hear me. Please. Well, re'ach that we Israel. Well, we've been sitting for a while. Hell, you sit in front of a television all day. You go and sit all day long and it doesn't distract you. You're not bothered when you sit in Yah's house. You just get so, you got to do, oh, what time is it? It's hell time. How about that? Bar Yishon and I would go to a football game. You know, I was a sports fanatic. I'm not going to lie about it. We would drive miles for a football game. College football made no difference. Semi-pro in Charlotte. And of course, back in those days, Memorial Stadium, they didn't have no cushions on the bench. You sat there for three hours watching your game. Joe Crosby, we all went to school together watching them play football. We go to a basketball game. That's back in the day when UNC Charlotte had Cedric Maxwell and them boys going to the Final Four. We had to set up in the up there in the old Coliseum. And then you had to get back home. Didn't seek with 13,000 people. You know, when it comes to yeah, we get irritable. We could sit around all day long eating and gabbing and talking about nothing. It is the truth. May I open up a little window for us, Yisraya? There are two things I want to reveal today. And three things, two things, and I want to get to this, and then I'm going to stop in this process. I'm hungry because I ate yesterday at around noon 30, and I didn't eat after that. I had so much to do, I wasn't thinking, so I certainly cannot eat after the broadcast because I began to do the wild thing when I eat late at night. I can't do it. And so I can't wait for my meal today. Hallelujah. I want to show you the strength of this kingdom and this mind that opposed Yah. It's in the book of Hanak. You may not have it, but I want you to hear this. In the book of Hanak, he gave him his seat of great authority, what it said in Revelation. You hold on to that, that in Revelation. I'm going back there, all right? <clears throat> but it says in the book of Hanak, I want to reveal unto you the power of the wicked. And we that are in the Akharith, the last day of the time, uh, the value and the importance of observing the Torah of Yah. To observe the Torah. That's why the more them the feast days of Yah are vitally important. I said to my Isha, you're in the in the Isha. I, I will see you all. Let's get this building so beautiful with colors and everything. You don't have to paint it. Just buy some inexpensive material and hang stuff. Make it so pretty. We fix it up. And spend the last three weeks just fixing up the place. Uh, not fixing it up, but making it so beautiful. I want those to come when they come, that they will experience something. I want our children, your babies, that this become indelibly ingrained in their minds. They see the beauty and the value of it. They see every kind of whole Lindsay Lohan, every kind of damn slut, drug snorting jailbird Jezebels, Inspired to be like them. Uh, damn Lindsay Lohan, this Jezebel. Uh, has taught your daughters to be whores and liars and thieves. Uh, yeah. Just like the damn Brittany Houston uh, and this freak of freaks. What's her name? Uh, this thing you can tell she got everything pumped in her buttocks, her titties and everything. Uh, 
What is this Nicki Minaj, this damn freak out of hell? You listen to that. And you listen to that damn mess. You cried on me, that's all right. Can I go around all the Torah of Yahweh? When I was a kid, there were certain things that my grandmother would allow in the house. There were certain things you could not do. Although she was a woman that didn't know Yah, there were certain things. And on that Sunday, you didn't do nothing. You didn't cook, you didn't do nothing. And that was a fact. That's the way it was in my generation. When I was being brought up, I am glad. I, I was saying the other day, I missed the 60s. You had a devotion of affection in the community that has never been like it was then. The people legitimately, they didn't know how to love. But there was a strong attachment to each other. Especially in the South here where I was raised. You saw it. They simply had a great compassion. They all were poor. And they all were in the same condition. We all walked to school and we would go to our segregated schools and everybody saying, everybody, no fights. And when it was a fight, it was something taken off on the side that you sip and I, we're going to thump today, baby. And it was a fair fight. You didn't use no bat or no stick. You had to know how to use these here. You had to know how to use them. You had to. You had to be sharp. Because if you didn't, you were down. And then if you, you would mess with the wrong one and they bow load to jack you up, then even that, they would say, oh, oh, no, 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 no. Let him up. Fight. And then you became best friend. You can't fight against Yah. You can't fight against Yahshua. You're not going to win. So you might as well become his friend. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. The Nobi Hanak says, I want to give you a demonstration of his power. Hanak 108 verse 1. It says, another book of Hanak of Enoch, which he wrote for his son Methuselah, and those that will come after Methuselah, are we after him? Yeah. Listen to this. Observing the Torah in the last days, and when the Akhrith, when the last days, should we not observe? The word observe is shamach, to guard it about as thorns, to hedge it about. Do not let anything encroach upon it to destroy it. We should observe. We should guard the teaching of Yah. We should guard the testament of Yahshua in our hearts. Uh, in these last days especially. He gives us a refresher. He, you that have uh, observed uh, the Torah. He tells us how we shall wait. We shall wait kava, patiently. Enduring the affliction without murmuring, without complaining. And in all of that, we have a tigvah. We have a hope of assurance. We have the security of the dabarim, the promises in the word of Yah, because we observe the Torah. We wait patiently in all the days until the time. What time? Until the time of those who work rach, evil, is complete. Is coming down, Israel. The song in the whole house we will sing, Satan, your kingdom is coming down. You've been building your kingdom all over this land, oh devil. Your kingdom is coming down, the kingdom of the wicked, the kingdom of the oppressor, the suppressor is coming down. Come out of it. There's nothing. Our lives are nothing but a vapor smoke. It is either that this is real, or it is one of the most false delusion of hells. Run and die like a drunkard. Because there is nothing that shall be, you shall go back to the dirt of the earth. But if it is real, and we miss Yah, woe unto us all. He said, in those days, the evil work is complete. And listen, and the choach and the power of the wicked ones, it is ended. And he shall give him his power, his authority. For what? To assault Torah. That's what Jesus is. He's an insult to Torah. He assaults the Torah. That's what every damn God is. 
As for you, Yisrael, he says, I want you to wait, Kava, until sin pass away. Sin shall pass away. You shall reveal the wicked one whom your sure shall consume and destroy with the theft, with the words of his mouth. He's going to destroy him. He said, until sin pass away and the names of the city shall be blotted out from the book of life and the books of Yahweh, the Kodash one, their seed shall be shomad, eviscerated, destroyed. He said, forever. And their spirit shall perish and die. There shall be no life. They don't have the ruach because Yah is ruach. He is life. But their spirit shall die and they shall cry and lament. In the place that is at an invisible midbar wilderness. And they shall burn in the fire. For there exists there upon the grounds of the earth. That is the strength of the wicked. What is the strength of the Torah? Of the strength of sin? Isn't the Torah the strength of sin? For the Torah is the strength of sin. It shows you when you sin. It shows you when you're wrong. It shows you the consequences of your actions and your activity. Does not the Torah do that? Sure does. So is the strength of the wicked ones. The Torah, the sin. It shall not go unpunished. And so this one that knows that he has but a short time. Hashatan know that his time is short. He must raise up this contingency of a mind that is dark. If you don't dwell in the Torah, the truth of God, you don't know the power of Torah. He has never. He was a murderer from the beginning because he did not abide. He did not dwell in the Torah of Yah. And so he has this, this, this superficial stupidity thinking he's going to overcome Yah. Just like the religious mind. Well, I can do what I want to. Please do what you want to. I have no compunction when you do what you want to. There's a key element of his kingdom. Look at verse 3 of Revelation. Have we ever considered this? I'm going to read it. Do we even understand this? No, we don't. Yah raised up to know me the prophet, the true messengers, not these false, grinning, skinning liars and devils. If there's a profound utterance, it's here in Revelation 13, 3. And I saw one of his heads. How many heads did he have? Mm. I saw one of his roof as it was dacha, a crushing, powerful blow, as it was wounded to the Muth or death, prematurely dying. And it said, and the deadly wound was healed, and all, does it say all? Yeah. And all of the world, Hanun, 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 all of the world wandered after the beast. All of the world, Hanun show this benevolence, this great fervor of love and this great tenderness and great awe and this great inspiration from a man and a kingdom that generates some of the most vilest of wickedness to assault Yah, his kingdom and his people. How does one wound a head like that? Who does the wounding? That's why we must trust Yah. Can I give us some? Assurance as to who's they control. Can I show us the metaphor, the prototype of this? All right. Go to Yeshaya Isaiah 51. Quickly. It's one thing that Yah is going to always defend his people. We must look at the prototype. We must look at the pattern and the example. It says in Yeshaya, does it not say that his head was wounded? What, does it not say that his head was dacha? It was crushed. It was a crushing blower. It's almost like Mayweather when he hit those cats with some of those punching the punches. It's a crushing blow. It just takes all life out of them. They don't get up from it. 
His head as though it was wounded. We must understand the, the prototype. We must understand that what consists here, Yisra'ya. I want to reveal that to you. It says here in the book of Yeshaya, Isaiah chapter 51. One verse I want to read. Verse 59. This is to give you assurance that Hamashiach, you're sure the word of Yah will always defend his people. Look at this. Isaiah 51 verse 9. He tells us to awaken. Oh, oh, let the light shine. I want you to awaken triumphantly in the excitement of what we're about to endure. That's what the word or, or, to awaken triumphantly excited about what is about to happen. A kingdom of hell to resist the power of your testimony, your edha, the law, the mishira, the government. Of you are in your bosom. I don't think we understand that. He tells us to awaken. Awaken. And he tells us to labash. To clothe ourselves. To put on the, the ooze. The strength. The might. Yisraya. This ooze is more than just a physical strength. It is the boldness. It is the intensity of boldness. And if a man has not the ooze of Yah. The strength of Yah. There is no boldness to that man. He's the weak fledgling of a thing. He tells us to put on the ooz, the strength. You must put on the boldness. It is a voice that is loud. It speaks of security and comfort. That's what the word ooz, O-O-Z. That's what it means. That's what it implies. That's why he tells us here to put on strength. Who, O arm of Yahweh, O arm of Yah. He said, awaken us in the Kidim or in the ancient, uh, in the earliest of days. Um, he said, in the generation of old, uh, he said, cause your pure mind to be stirred up. And remember what I've done. He pulled us up out of the depth of hell, did he not? Uh, listen to what the word says, the Torah. Listen to what the Dabarim of Yah says. Was not it Yah? Was it not I that has... Hasab, cut, hewn, Rehab, this mystical monster, this mystical thing that war against Yisrael, the Rehab. He said, wasn't it I that cut him? He says, and I also wounded. Does it say that? Yeah. And I wounded. Does he say that? Yeah. And I wounded. Who? The dragon. Did not Yah wound him? Yes. Is not Yah the one that is in control? Yes. There's a reason why he's doing that. For one thing for, un for us to understand. Can I show us? Will you trust me to show you the truth? Let me show you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Before I do that, I want you to understand Yisraya one factor. For all of this madness we're going to have to endure, what's the reason behind it? What has constituted this? Why are we in the shape we're in? If there was one that, not only did he hear the voice of Jeremiah speak, but he strived his words, and those words spoke indelibly unto Baruch. And he gives us the reason behind all of this madness. Second Baruch. First Baruch, first Baruch, chapter 4, and I believe it's two verses, three verses here I want to read. Hallelujah. Baruch, hallelujah. First Baruch, chapter 4, verse 6. Yah says, you were sold to the nations. There is no people that can identify with Yisra'ah unless they have been sold to the nations of the earth. I don't give a damn what your historical falseism says. He says you were sold to the nation. History will show you a people or a group of people that have been sold to the nations like no other people. You were sold to the nations. Yah says not for your destruction. He didn't bring us here to destroy us. Not for his shamad. Do you all hear that? Not to destroy us. This kingdom of hell is not, to, it's not going to destroy you, Yisra'ah. 
and these damn prostitutes, these whole houses. Oh, you're going to be raptured up! They're liars. They're fearful pigs. They're afraid. They have no strength. They're fearful. When one has that kind of fearfulness, they have not the, the hub, the love of Yah. They don't love the Torah of Yah. Yah did not sell you to the nations for your destruction. Not for your destruction. But because we simply move Yah to his Ebra, to wrath. We moved him to anger. Can I share an example? It is daddy that pampers and posture the son. And all of a sudden the son just continued to disobey. Daddy said, that's your ass now boy that's your ass give me that belt and he does it with an ebra with a vengeance that mama nobody stops him not even the cries of the sun he burns as granny would say i'm going to set your ass on fire and daddy pulls out that belt and he whops the hell out of that boy and the boy gets quiet he sits over there for a while and daddy, he didn't do that to destroy him. He did that to say, boy, I love you so much. I don't want to see the, the dearth of destruction and the road that you headed down. That's what this implies. We move, Yah, our forefathers to wrath. You were delivered unto the enemies. We have been delivered unto those enemies of Yah. Those that hate Yah. Is not tribulation a time that we're going to be delivered into the hands of the enemy? You're not going to be able to buy or sell unless you have the mark of the number of the name of the beast or his name. You must have the system of this beast system uh, entrenched in your heart uh, that you're faithful and obedient unto that system, Yisraya. And then if anyone betray that, you don't give a damn if it's your mammy, your grandmammy, your grandpappy, you turn them over to death. That's why man's foe shall be of his own house. Everybody trying to save their little wicked horse daughter and the fag pumping son. They don't give a damn about no one. I said to a precious man yesterday that sends a lot of money here to support this work here. I said of all the people you've talked to and you're with us about, yeah, can you name me three that has ever called you? He said, Riyak, I can't name one. I said, I did that because I knew you couldn't name one. I said, I had no fear of saying one. I said, but I did what y'all did to Abraham. If you find me ten, damn it, I'll save the whole damn land. Oh, I've been a witness. You have been nothing. It is the power, the beauty of the Adah, of your sureness, that men will ask you, who are you? Man, I know you from somewhere. Who, 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 is this, who, is this, who is this cat? And then they will inquire for the reason of the tikva that is in you. I say, you haven't had three. He said, Rayak, I haven't had one. I enjoy talking to you because your wisdom. I'm much older than you, but it is that wisdom that Yah has granted. We need the elder among us. We need the Zakim. Old men that are wise, not foolish and silly. Not with laughter. We need the Zakim, the elderly women. We need that. Not one, he can name one. Neither can you. But Yah hasn't lost one. I'm so glad. It is your sure that shall wound the head of this beast, this system. He's going to bring it down. And there's going to be this superficial or this Greek metamorphosis, the simeon, this healing. But it will not be the mafif. It will not be the healing of Yah. That's why we are sick. In our bodies, we're sick in our minds above all. I don't mind being sick in my body. I don't want to be sick in my liver. I don't want to be sick here. I don't care if I die weak. I, I don't mind that. Your sure died that way. He was weak. He made me love me ever, please. Take this cup. Nevertheless, the legend will be done. I don't know how to hell it. I'm 33 years old. I know I'm the living God, right, but this must be done. He was made lack unto man. The word was tried out of the bosom of a man. You understand? It was only the faithfulness of his obedience and by the ruach of Yah. The life emanated from that 
Torah, a substance, an abundance. That's how man. And unless the igniting of the Ruach is in us when we hear the word, you don't have a damn thing. Goes in one of these old dirty wax ears and goes out the other Uzan. How about that? That's right. Hallelujah. 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 Where was I reading from? From Hanak? From Baruch? Yeah. Okay, yeah, here it is. Forgive me. It says in Baruch, 1 Baruch 4 7, you have provoked Yah that made you. We have done that. I don't want to use the word Zabach Yezak in Yeramiyah. He said, you have provoked Yah by sacrificing unto devils. Jesus, loud God, Pentecostal, Baptist. You have offered offerings unto devils, Hashatan, Shadims, to demons, and not to Yah. Oh, I cannot go on wood. I made it through. You damn wood God, huh? You never heard people say that I know my Ima here. I can knock on wood, baby. You gonna hurt your fingers, old woman. Silly old man. We have sacrificed every kind of demonic power. We offer our children up unto Molach and Molcham. We offer them to the fire of destruction. That the world calls them to burn into hell. This is why Yah said not because you offer up to demons and powers of hell. This is what we have done in verse 8. You have forgotten the Olam V at all, the everlasting Yah, our Abba, that brought you up. And you have grieved, you have caused the heart of Yerushalayim that nursed you. You have caused the heart of Yerushalayim to falter and to to be overwhelmed because of your wickedness and because of your sins. You have caused that. You have caused much to befall you because of that. This kingdom that shall arise, I want to express the mantra or the strength of this kingdom. Back to Revelation. Revelation chapter 13. Verse 4. Revelation chapter 13 verse 4. It says, And they, we know that no man will be able to Hanan, to obtain the originality or the creative mind of Yah in that day. You're not going to have the mind of Yahshua. You go into that time, you're locked in, Yisrael. But this kingdom that shall arise, it says this. And they worship the Tani, they worship as Yah says, you are in the trouble because you are offered unto devils and demons. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, this is the heart of the people. And this is a profound utterance here. And I don't want to start it until next week. Is that all right? Who is like the beast? And who is able to make Milchaya with the beast? Isn't that a statement? The darkness of the mind, they will say, who is like him? Who is like this beast? That shall be the conclusion of this teaching. And this is the the beginning, who is like the beast? The mark of the beast. That's profound. And I will continue there. I'm going to stop. Is that all right? Can I do that? Who is like this beast? Give you a little something to digest. And when you hear this on next week, uh, maybe we have a dancing procession after that. How about that? I missed that last week or the last time I preached. And so, yeah, after every teaching, I will go back to the Torah. And the Ru'ak remind me, you see that? You see this? You see that? 
Every word of Yah is pure, isn't it? Therefore, we, the Abid, the servants of Yah, we have confidence. We reside in the Torah. I am a word preacher. I've always been that way. I've always preached from one concept, one word. Just one word. Not a plethora of scripture or chatzveh. It's just from the chatuv. That's how I preach. Never emulated any preacher. Don't want to emulate one. Can I say this? We greet you all that have joined us. I remember as a young man, I was about 25 years old. My Isha and I. We went to this whole house. And uh, I, I wanted to preach 25, 26. I, I was no older than that. And I will never forget. This man was preaching. I went to hear this man. See what he said. And I was a young, stupid kid. Still, I am ignorant as they come. And I'm sitting there taking my regular seat beside my Isha on the front row. And this man, I guess he was doing what he was being paid to do, preaching. And in all of his gyrations, in all of his actions, and I lied to you all not, he looks at me, and I'm looking at him. Not in a way of disdain, but I look at this man, this silly man, because the man that I honored greatly, he said this to me, you're not going to be like them. And he put things in me that I wasn't like. And I didn't act like those foolish men. You understand? And I was a young man. Back then he had about three, four, five little whole houses under him. That had been a nice little preaching one this Sunday. Two or three Sundays preaching that one. They gave him a nice offering. Undoubtedly, he saw something in me that he liked. He saw something. And I said in my bosom, yeah, I don't want to be like that thing like that man I don't want to act like him I don't want this foolishness because the words of evangelist E.J. Hartsfield his name was Ezra James they reverberated in my conscience and said I don't want you acting like those men my young Ach you're not going to be like them he let other men do that he will not let me he let them repetitively uh, with same phrase and phraseology, but if I did that, he would rebuke me. And he didn't mind doing it openly. He didn't mind. And I appreciate that. If I never see the man in this realm, he's about 70 years old now. That's all right. He put something in me. May the riches of you, you that have joined us, if this has been a rich blessing, send an offering. I don't do this offering. Send something to help. Help feed the house. We're not beggars. You're not going down to the corner whole house and get this. Are you boasting? No. And those are the same men that would say, I know as much as you know. No, they don't know what I know. They can't talk like me. No, they cannot. I don't care what they say. I'm not, come on. They talk, but they don't talk like me. Oh, you talk, you think you're wise? No. I talk so simple that they are trying to prove that they are intellectual and smart, they talk dumb. So I don't have to prove that I'm that. I talk simple. Well, you say dumb, I know. That's why I talk simple like that. Can you get any simple? Oh, uh, well, you know, well, uh, Jer uh, you know, Jerry Falwell and those men would not say damn. They will say, well, uh, the Most High is going to eviscerate and they will go to Sheol. No, you're going to hell. Oh, well, they will go down into Sheol. Oh, it is a place uh, of the, of, of the subworld where there are spirits. No, they are sure they are, they are damn devils uh, and demons. Uh, and you know, it will come a period of time. Well, he is very compassionate. God is not going to send anyone to hell. I know your damn God is going to hell with you. Hallelujah. Your damn wicked God is going to hell with you. How about that? You can't back me down. You want to back me down? Come on here. First of all, you got to do this first. You got to get in the fields with me and work for a day. You make it through that day working with me, you can back me down. If you can't do that, then don't do it. Don't try. Don't try that. I was saying to Ak Simeon, I said, Simeon, I'm tired, man. I loaded that truck basically, but I loaded the thing four yards a day by hand. Do you understand what I'm saying? With a shovel and a wheelbarrow. 
And of course, working out here was nice when you walked inside that, you know, inside the greenhouse, you were like, whoa, this is hot here. And, and my Isha, she saw me, she didn't, didn't realize we got all that nice cold water in the gym. She goes and bring me a cold glass of water, give a Sadiq man, when she brought it, I thought about that. You give a Sadiq man a glass of water in the name of a righteous man, you shall in no wise lose your reward. She said, I just brought you some water. I said, baby, I got plenty of water. I just, when I, when I get hot, I said, I tried to get my friend. I said, Abner, this is fun, buddy. He looks at me, he says, no. I said, come on, I say, son, walking in this greenhouse and pushing this wheelbarrow, all this, this is fun, lad. He said, uh-uh, that doesn't look like fun. So I still made him help me. And take us but a minute, but I still made him do that. He said, that doesn't look like fun. And I was exacerbated. I was more out. I unloaded that with a shovel, quill bear, filled every, set everything up, planted, filled that greenhouse up. And I said to Shimri, was it that night? I said, Shimri, yeah. I said, look, I'm going to bed. I went to bed that night. I said, I'm not waiting up for nothing. And believe me, Ak Shimri, I did not wake up until 6 that morning. And then I couldn't go back to sleep for another half an hour. I was wore out, man. I was literally wore out. But what sweet sleep that was. Ain't nothing like a laboring man when he sleeps. Tell me, man. Talk to me. There's nothing sweet like that sleep when you know you have exerted the level of compassion. You know why I like to fix that up? Because I love to eat. Nobody here loves to eat as much as I do. I can eat more than anyone. I love tough food. No, I don't want no baked chicken. I don't want no seared salmon. I want it fried. And don't give me that jive uh, salmon pate. Give me some fried salmon biscuits. Talk to me, mama, with biscuits. The yeast ones. Give me that. Don't hold back the seasonings for me. Put it in the pan. Make it brown. Give me some fried bass. No, no big bass. Who wants to eat some big perch? Not me. I want it fried. I don't want no baked potato. Give me some french fries. Don't do me. Well, that ain't tough for you, but it sure is tough going down. I like that. Fried chicken. I said, the next time I cook it, I got something. Zaken Yerami, I said, I found a recipe. I said, this is going to work. I told Meishaw, she looks at me and said, boy, you, it, it, this may cause a heartburn here. It may cause your cholesterol level to rise above the heavens. But it sure is going to be tough. You understand? Let us do all things in moderation, our eating and all. You don't have to buy no pills or some little magical formula to lose weight you just eat right you eat one meal a day that, that that that's enough i get one meal i'm straight with that i don't the only reason i will eat a little something in the morning because i want to take my flaxseed oil i can't take that shimri can't i can't take that on an empty belly i want to take my flaxseed oil i want to take vitamins and some calcium magnesium my bones they hurt at times i'm just because all the things i've done in my life you moving heavy stuff, you'll feel that when you get my age. Believe me, the air bowl, when I fell, yes, I said, Abner, I just had to sit there for a while. He couldn't laugh at me. He, and then after I missed a shot, he took off down the court flying. Boom. We ran three full courts, one-on-one. -on -one. I can do that. I tell you what, go out there and do that. And what I had to show him love take me a layup to win the game. I had to D him up because he was busting. He was rocking them from downtown. Just He was Cleveland. So I said, boy, you're not going to win this one now. All the rest of them, I take jump shot. This one, I'm going to win. And so I figured if I switch him up, I said, uh, let's run full court. You take the low end, I take the high end. Thinking he's coming back this way, he's going to miss shots because he's got to adjust for that. <laughs> 
He's raining them from downtown on me. I'm telling the truth. So look at this boy. I, I get him next week, though. May the riches of y'all. We greet you all. Ach, Zachin, Charles Davis there out in California. All of you that are listening. All of you are in Miriam. Everywhere you're listening, our Ach, our Zachin, Yaqub, there in Jacksonville, Florida. And you also are precious Ach, our Yaqub there in in McKinney, Texas, as well as uh, all of our friends. Um, our Ach, Michaya, Michaya. I like that name. Who is like Yah? Bichaya. I got something for us next week. And you hold Bichaya La and Safon. Uh, we greet you all. Wherever you are, our Ach Dawid Stroll, Ach Kevin there, we greet you. Wherever you're listening, our friends and even my enemies, I appreciate you. You make me strong and you keep me strong. You make me fat and you keep me fat. I love enemies. Because I like busting heads. You understand? I like to bust heads. He shouldn't talk like that. You're so silly. You're so immature. You know, you talk to this generation. Oh, well, you know, well, of course, you know, God loves you. And they tell you, go to hell, preaching. Go to hell. And we think that, we, we think we're making inroads. Yahshua said, to eat this truth and drink this living one. They said, hell no. It's a hard thing to do. Huh? I'm not walking with you, man. That's too hard. And so they say I'm hard, but there's a parable that talks about a king that is austere. Austere. He said, damn it, you know I reap what I sow not. You damn fool, you should have taken that talent and taken it to the usury and got me some money, you damn beast. Now... Take it from this wicked bastard. That's what he said. We think, oh, well, I don't talk like you. Don't talk like me. I don't want you. I don't want Zakin Yaramiya. His beauty is in his own. His beauty. Zakin Akshimri. The beauty is in their own, their own content. You understand? They have a beauty about them that I don't possess. And their reflection is not like mine. So you can't get by the way I get by. You understand? You understand what I'm saying? Because uh, I've always preached like this. I've always animated it. Every man can't do that. It was given to me for this moment. May I raise up his powerful nobi, the prophets, to stand against this cowardly. And it's not these freaks out here. They call themselves prophets. They're weak. You're not a prophet. You're not a shulish ach, an apostle. And you sure in hell is not one of the witnesses of Yah, Israel Hawkins. You're a damn liar. Someone give him that. Let him know. He was spit on me. He said, he's nobody. He's a whore. An old foolish whore. And the woman protected him. And she didn't even protect Almighty Yah. May the riches of Yah rest upon you. Come on, I'll suck in your We'll have the last words and close out. This service, I brought you all yesterday. I may have brought. Hallelujah! Who in here wants to be like Yahshua? Hallelujah! We answer that quickly, don't we, Israel? But He did everything to please the Abba. Did not He do? So we must do all that was preached and that was spoken unto us this day. We want to be like Him. We want to please our bond all things, then we must walk in the Torah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to say a whole lot, but one thing I do want to say as, as I uh, was speaking on uh, Shema Yisrael when uh, Reach was out of town. We think of Yahshua HaMashiach, was he not meet Yisrael? What does that, we take that you know, out of context as a man and no fight and all this and all that, do we not? What did Yahshua do when he went into the house of Yahweh, when they turned into a house of, of, uh, of where they sold goods and things like that, Yisrael? What did he do? He went in there like a madman. He went, turned over the tables, and I'm going to use the word, yes I am, he kicked ass. Yes, he did. But we don't think that as being meek. Did he 
uh, cross over the Torah? No, he did not. Because he was the Torah, Yisra'ya. So we can't be meek, Yisra'ya. And, and what I'm saying, we can't be uh, in the fashion that we cannot stand on the Torah of Yahweh. That we just let anyone and everyone just run over us because of the knowledge that they have. Oh, they believe that man, he has no meekness. He's a, he's a raven fool. I don't mind being a fool for Yahshua. Call me a fool. Hallelujah. But I'm going to remain under the statutes and on the ordinances of the Torah and of Almighty Yahweh. That's what makes us meek, Israel. That's what makes us like Yahshua HaMashiach. That's what the true meaning of a meek man is. We walk at, don't, we won't be like Yahshua, do we not, Israel? Then let us walk in, in the statutes. Let us walk in the ordinances, that which Yahweh has ordained from the beginning of all things. Hallelujah. Let us stand, Israel. Hallelujah. For Yahweh here is tough. And his mercies endure through all generations. Hallelujah. Abba Yahweh, we do barak you for this beautiful day you have given us, a day in which your mercies, your truth has been renewed unto us. You have fed us mightily today, Yahweh, and we do barak you for that. We do ask those that have came from near and far that you would take them, Yahweh, to the appointed place at the appointed time that your Melikans may be encamped around them. And all things we do barak you and give us rest today and the assurance of Yahshua HaMashiach and in the assurance, Yahweh, that you are in control of all things and everything. And all things we do, Barak, you in the precious and mighty name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, we do declare, Hallelujah! 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 Yahweh, Barak, you all, Yisrael. Hallelujah!